So recording that. All right. Allie, Judas. That is not true. What do we do here? What? We sure do do a use of. What do you got to be? Yeah, use x squared plus 1. Thank you, David. <laughs> U is x squared plus 1. That's the denominator. Okay, we can't. We have a lot of integration skills coming up here. They're all the same skills we've had. Okay, we're adding a little bit to it, but not in terms of integration skills. So, we should be able to handle these. If u is x squared plus 1, then du is. It's not just 2x, it's 2x dx. Okay? So we're going to move the 6 out front. We don't care about you, stupid 6. Get out front. We're going to put a 2 in there with it. Okay? And that means out front we need to divide by a 2. Again, we're not canceling out that 6. We're just moving the 6 out front. It was already there. So this integral becomes 3 times the integral of 1 over u du. Height? Laura, what are my limits become? Um, Word. One to five, and what's that integral over? What are you giving me here? Very true. We're going to have the value of u from one to five. We're going to plug in five, so we don't have the value anymore, which is positive, right? Minus three ln one. But everybody knows that the ln of one is zero, so that just goes away completely. So the answer is three ln of five, and if you're feeling super super frisky. You can make it LN125. Okay, you make the exponent there. Everybody good on that? Well, what? So, today we're going to talk about a topic called differential equations. It's a very, very gigantic, large topic. You can study it in detail. Um, you take classes on differential equations. In a Calc 1 class, we're going to handle differential equations very, very, very lightly and just kind of, you know, tip, tip of the iceberg kind of thing here. All right, uh, we'll go over the main gist of it and what kind of questions you should expect to see. But a lot of what we're going to look at and a lot of skills you need here are just the indefinite integration skills that we've learned before. All right, so all a differential equation is, is an equation that contains, I say a derivative, but really differentials. Like dy and dx are called differentials. All right, Remember, an infinitely small change in a variable. Okay, that's called a differential. So a differential. So any equation that has that in there um, is called a differential equation. And the goal, I'm actually going to work on two separate ones just to show you the difference. So, okay, Ben. What? Two, there we go. So those are two different differential equations, dy dx equals 2x and dy dx equals 2y, all right? The way we will always, always, always solve a differential equation is we want to get, and again, this is just a Calc 1 thing. Later on, like if you keep taking math further, you're going to see differential equations where you cannot do this, okay? But in our case, we're going to handle just these ones where, we're, where we can, they're called separable. We want to separate all the x's and all the y's or all the dependent and all the independent variables, whatever they happen to be. Okay, so I want to get all the y's on one side, and I want to get all the x's on one side. And when I say all the x's, I mean dx counts as an x. So I want to get all the x's on one side with the dx, and all the y's on one side with the dy. Now, in both of these examples, you can see here, um, there's only a, there's a 2x, okay, there's not much going on with this, and a dy over dx. The goal of a differential equation is for us to end up at the end with y equals, and have some equation who fits this, whose derivative is 2x. Okay, you could probably do this in your head. All right, but I'm gonna say that again. So remember back in Algebra 1, where you had equations like this, and you were to solve that? The goal of that, like solving that equation, is to find out what number I can plug in for x, substitute in for x, and what, what makes it true. So everybody hopefully knows the answer to that is three, because if I put a three in here for x, it makes the equation true. So okay? The goal of a differential equation, again, is not to get a number, it's to get like a function, a, a, an expression, okay? Usually a function that we can derive and it makes that derivative true, okay? So again, hopefully everybody sees this is just gonna be x squared plus c, all right, if you integrate that. But what we're really doing when we do this is we're gonna multiply that dx over to the other side like that. 
all right? And that's me separating the variables. All the X's on one side, all the Y's on one side. A very important key thing for this is that DX has to be multiplied by the stuff that it's next to, okay? It can't be added. Like, we've never, ever, ever done an integral where you had something like X plus DX. That doesn't make any sense, okay? It has to be multiplication. So the way we're going to separate variables will always be with multiplication and addition. And if it doesn't look like you can do that, then you got to you got to do some algebra to get it to work. And we'll look at a couple examples of that in a minute. Um, but once you have these things separated, you're just going to integrate both sides. Okay? And this, and this, again, this is a very easy example. The integral of 1, this is really a 1 in here. Integral of 1 dy is just y. Cool. And the integral of 2x dx is x squared plus c. Now, let's talk about this. Does it make sense that we could have a plus c on the y side as well? That was an indefinite integral, right? So the, pro the problem is this. We wouldn't put y plus c over here because they could be different numbers, so we can't use the same symbol. Is it okay? So even if we put another symbol over here, like y plus d, everyone with me here? Let, let's say those two numbers were like 4 and 6. It doesn't matter what the numbers are. Do you see that I could just move the d? I could subtract d off and take that away, and I'd get c minus d, which is just some number anyway. So we really only need one number to say that there could be two numbers because we can put them together. So the general rule is just how it's done is you put a plus C on the X side, the step after you integrate. Okay. Now in this case, we're done because Y is all by itself. And what this says is any function that's of this form, Y equals X squared plus C. If you derive it, you will get two X. So it works. Make sense? The other differential equation, which is over here, which looks very, very similar, I cannot do the same thing to that. Okay, I have to separate the y's over with, with the dy. So when I do that here, if you all can follow along with me, it will really become this. That's me separating the x's and the y's. You multiply by 1 over y to get rid of the y, because you can't be over there with the x side. Okay. Keep in mind, our dx or our dy has to be multiplication, and it has to be in the numerator. It has to be multiplying by it, not dividing by it. So, like, you wouldn't do something like this. I don't know if you guys see this here. Like, you wouldn't make this, like, 1 over dx equals 2y over dy. It doesn't make any sense. Okay? We have to have times dy at the end. So, while that's correct, I can't integrate that the way it is. All right? So, we want this. And now we're just going to integrate both sides. The integral of 1 over y, dy, is natural log of y, absolute value y. Okay, the integral of 2, dx, is 2x plus c. That's the calculus portion of this adventure here. And now the rest of this is get y by itself. We want to know what y equals. Okay, so keep in mind, let's remember what logs do here. What's log base 2 of 8 going to be, Eric? Sure is 3. Why? Word. Yeah, that's what a log does, right? Take the base to the opposite side, has to equal what's inside. So the way, again, over here, we want to get y by itself, but it's stuck inside this natural log. we got to get it out of there. We do that by rewriting it exponentially. Natural log is really base e. So e to the 2x plus c is equal to the absolute value of y. Cool. Some teachers will say, like, you're raising both sides, like, e to the power, right? e to the ln, absolute value y, and e to the 2x plus c. Okay. It's the same, same idea. Um, now, something weird, a lot of textbooks, and AP tests will do this as well. Okay, I'm throwing some more algebra at you. Does everybody know that x squared times x to the fourth is x to the sixth? Okay. That's because when you're multiplying those bases can really add the exponents, okay? which you usually see in an Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 class is going in this direction, right? But sometimes we want to undo. We want to break apart a plus and go back. And that's what's happening over here. See how we have this big addition right here? Again, we don't need to do this for any particular reason except to simplify it. Okay, We want to write this as simple as possible. So this is the same exact thing as e to the 2x times e to the c. 
Okay. The reason why that's better is watch this insanity. C is just some constant. I just don't know what it is, which means E to the C is just some constant. I don't know what it is. But rather than writing E to some number, we're going to take this whole number out and call it something different. Just one, one letter. They usually use A. Okay. So really what you'd see here is this. Okay. Everybody with me? Well, there's an A there instead of just a C. We're breaking it apart and turning E to the C into just something. A is E to the C, but we just put an A there because it's just some number. All right. The reason why this is better, I don't know if you guys remember back when you did exponential equations. What is A? This is an exponential equation. What is A? If we were to graph that. Slope. It's not the slope. If it was like mx plus b, it'd be the slope. In an exponential equation, A is the y-intercept. A, A is the initial amount. You don't want it to be e to the c. That's weird. Okay? Um, anyway, oh, that makes sense. That's just how IUC is usually done. But all the absolute value does is put a plus or minus over here. Okay? And actually, for right now, let's not worry about the plus or minus because A could be positive or negative at all. So just we'll deal with absolute value in, in a second. All right? or, or maybe tomorrow. I don't want to mess with absolute value right now. Um, but do you see how I separated main steps, separate the variables, integrate both sides, solve for y? Is it okay? And if what I'm telling you is correct, that means that that equation down there is a solution to this differential equation. Okay, let's check it out. What do you get when you derive A is just some number? What do you get when you derive that? You get dy dx. A is just kind of chilling. What's the derivative of e to the 2x? 2 e to the 2x, right? e to the 2x times 2. Right, like that. That's just the same thing as 2 times a times e to the 2x. But what was this thing here? Oh my gosh, it was y. Okay, so the derivative is 2 times y. It works. Oh my gosh. It's like magic. Okay. And if you think about it, which you probably weren't in the very beginning here, um, this says, this right here says we're looking for something we derive that turns into two of itself. We want to derive y, end up with two y. What's the, what's the only thing we derive and get back the same exact thing? E to the zero. Okay, true, zero. But also e to the x. Right? So if this was a 1 there, the answer to that is e to the x. Now, there could be a number out front. Like, what's the derivative of 3 to the x? 3 to the same thing, right? So the solution to that right now is just e to the x times some number. But when you put a 2 there, it's e to the 2x times some number. So we derive it, it doubles itself. What if this was a 10? What would the answer to that be? What do you derive to get the same exact thing but times 10? Not 10 to the x. If, if you derive 10 to the x, you get 10 to the x, the same thing. Yeah, it's got to be e to the 10x. Is it okay? Um, you know, why these are important, gang? Again, this is telling me something about the rate of growth of, of, of something. Okay, So let's, let's, think, let's think about things that, that fit that, this narrative here. Um, things that grow relative to themselves. Like think about... Population is one of them. Let's say we have a small population and we have a large population of rabbits. Okay, so let's say, I don't know, Hallie has four rabbits. She puts them out in the field where there's nobody hunting them or anything and they're allowed to just go to town and have fun. Okay, and over here we have a large population of David for some reason has a thousand rabbits. Okay, but same thing, he's got a lot of property, lets a thousand rabbits out. Okay, and they're allowed just to, you know, have fun and party. Um, and which population is going to grow faster? Definitely this one, right? It's going, to grow, it's going to grow faster because there's more of them to grow. Does that make sense? What, what that right there is, I know that seems like a kind of a simple concept. It says that the rate of change of our population with respect to time is relative to the population itself. Its rate of change has to do with how much is there. That's called proportional, by the way. The bigger it is, the faster it grows. Does that make sense? So the population's rate of change is proportional to the population itself. Lots of things do this. How about money in the bank? 
if you put a hundred dollars in the bank at three percent interest for a year, you're gonna get three bucks. But if you put a thousand dollars in the bank at three percent interest for a year, you're gonna get thirty bucks. The bigger the amount of money you put into the bank, the faster it grows. It's growing at the same percentage, but it's growing faster because you're getting more. Does that make sense? And by the way, remember we just got y equals a e to the k t. That's just different letters for something you've seen before, probably in pre-calc, P to the RT. It's the same exact thing. That just comes from the fact that it grows proportional to how much you put into the bank. Okay, a little weird. Okay, so differential equations pop up in all kinds of different scenarios. Um, you can think about, let me think here. Anytime you can think about the rate of change of something, it pops up into a differential equation. Think about the rate of change of, of, of a virus, all right? If, I don't know, Long Beach is completely healthy and we're all locked in the Long Beach for some reason, we can't get out, okay? And one person comes in with a highly contagious disease. Cool. That person's going to pass that disease off. Does that make sense? It's airborne. Okay, we're all doomed. All right? But as more and more people get that disease, what should happen to the rate that it spreads? It should increase. But if there's only a thousand people in the school, what should eventually happen to the rate of increase then? It's going to slow down. Okay, so the rate of change, this is what this looks like. The rate of change of the diseased people, let's use a D, what's good? DI for illness, okay, the ill. With respect to time, is proportional to how many people have it, but there's also, now in this case there was 1,000, it also slows down the closer we get to 1,000. Okay, and that leads to a, an equation that relates the rate of something to how much is actually there. And that's the point of differential equations. There's, there's populations work like this. There's all kinds of different like scenarios you can set up. Uh, we're not going to get into all that, to be honest. We're just going to solve these things for the most part. Okay? So I'm going to throw one at you. I would like you to solve it. Have fun. If I told you that dy dx was equal to what? What's a good one? x, y squared plus x. Now, our goal is to find out what y is all by itself. The steps to doing that are separate and then integrate and then solvulate. Just solve. I'm just making stuff up. So you can see that we have addition over here, which is the bane of our separation of variables. How do we turn this into multiplication? Factor. Yeah, we can factor an x out of here. So it doesn't look like that. that's something we can uh, separate in them as something we can do. But if you pull that x out, now we have multiplication. It has to be multiplication. What am I going to do next, Ben, if I want to separate the x and the y's? Cool. So you're right. So it looks like I could divide an X to get rid of it, but the problem is the DX is on the bottom over here. Yeah, I got to bring the DX over there, which means rather than dividing out the X, I'm going to have to divide out. Uh -huh. So the, this side becomes, so this DX still here, 1 over Y squared plus 1 times DY, and this side becomes X DX. So everybody, everybody see that? Like We could have divided by X up here. But then that would put a 1 over x over here, which we don't want because dx is on the bottom over there, okay? We have to keep dx and dy on top. So essentially, in this case, you're always going to be moving the y stuff over to the dy and the dx over to the other stuff, okay? But we're done. All the y's are on one side, all the x's are on one side, dx and dy are being multiplied at the end, and they're both in the numerators. So it's integrate. Please, 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 please do not tell me that the integral of 1 over y squared plus 1 is the ln of y squared plus 1. That's not good. Okay? What's the integral of 1 over y squared plus 1? It's an amazing function. We have a rule for this. What is it, David? It's not arc sine. It's arc tan. Yeah, those rules still matter. Don't forget those rules. All those integration rules, you got to know those. This is arc tan of y equals 1 of x squared plus c. 
And our goal is to get y by itself. So we need to know what undoes arctangent. If it was square root of y equals something, what would I do? I'd square it, right? That's what undoes it. If it was ln of y equals something, I would raise it to e to a power is how you get rid of an ln. Yeah? If it was y plus 4 equals something, I would subtract all 4 because subtraction kills addition. What gets rid of an arctangent? Tangent. Yeah, arctan is the inverse of tangent. So to get rid of it, tangent will do that. And they actually don't play as nice as we'd like, but for right now, we're going to forget that. But once you pay attention to this, we're going to take the tangent of both sides, the whole thing. So that plus C gets wrapped up into whatever happens from this point on. The tangent of the arctangent of Y, for our purposes right now, is just Y. All right. Now, I don't know if you guys remember pre-calc, arctan and tangent don't cancel each other out exactly like that all the time. But for right now, we're just going to say that. Okay? And over here, we just have the tangent. 1 of x squared plus c. Sound good? Let me show you. So a mistake kids will make sometimes is um, they'll integrate. So stick with me like through here. They'll integrate this x, and they won't put this plus c here. They'll just put 1 half x squared there. Then they'll take the tangent, and rather than putting the plus c with the x, they add this plus c at the end when they're done. Does that make sense? That's bad to do. Do not do that. The step where you integrate x, you have to put the plus c. And then anything you do from that point on, the plus c gets wrapped up inside of whatever's going on. So the plus c is actually inside of this tangent. Okay? Um, we've done indefinite integrals before. We've evaluated indefinite integrals before. We had that plus c at the end, and we had to find it. How do you find a plus c? What do I have to give you for, in order for you to find a plus c? I gotta give you an x and I gotta point. I gotta give you an x and a y value. Okay? So if they give you an x and a y value, they might say, find the particular solution, is what it's called. That just means find what c is too. Okay? Let's try one more. Time is class over. 17? I was actually guess. 20? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's try one more. Pause this somehow. You can see a pause button on here. You should be able to pause this, right? No. <laughs> I am still recording, I think so, yeah, right? No, I don't think so. Maddie, stop picking your nose. Mm -hmm. It is. It's good. You can be famous. Oh, here comes Maddie up to the front to ask something. Oh my God, Maddie! I can't believe it. Good parts are still funny. So we're classy people here. How do we separate this? Integrate. No, we got we got to separate the x and the y. You see, there's a y there. What's another way to rewrite e to the x plus y? e to the x times e to the y. Oh, yes. We just did that, right? There's that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And now, because it's all multiplication here, keep in mind, there's three things there. There's an e to the x times an e to the y times a 1 over 1 plus. That, that's really, that's what's sitting there, okay? We just got it all together in one big fraction. We need to divide by e to the y. We don't want that over there. That's going to give me 1 over e to the y dy equals e to the x over 1 plus e to the x dx. Okay? We've separated the y's. We've separated the x's. We can integrate both sides. Um, I doubt you remember this. I told you how to integrate 1 over e to a power or 2 to a power or anything like that. Okay, I'll give you a rule for this. You what?
we're going to rewrite that as the integral of what? b to the negative y. Yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, this is not an ln. So all the time, not all the time, but every once in a while, I get a handful of kids like ln of u to the y. Ln only works if it's 1 over y or 1 over x or 1 over u or something like that, okay? When you have an exponential thing in the denominator all by itself, just bring it up like that. That's how you're going to handle that, okay? All right. I also told you, if you have to integrate an exponential thing and the exponent isn't just a y or an x or a u, you should just do a u sub. Okay, so on that left-hand integral, I'm going to let u be negative y, which means du is negative 1 dy. Is okay? So I need a negative on my dy, which means I need to put a negative 1 out front, and that integral becomes negative 1 times the integral of e to the u du. And I'm hoping, honestly, guys, that you're getting to a point that when you see the integral of e to negative y, you just know it's going to be negative e to negative y. Okay? If we're not there. That's okay. It's all you sub. But, I mean, that's a lot of work to do this kind of little simple integral here. On the right-hand side, we're going to do u sub as well. But I'm not going to use the letter u because I've already used u to represent something. I'm going to use a different letter. What's your favorite letter? W. w. Excellent. M. I think it'll be okay. We'll use w, though. W it is. What's W got to be in this case? Thank you, Max. 1 plus E to the X. Yeah. Because in DU, or DW, is E to the X DX. It's two different integrals. And we have an E to the X DX sitting right up top here. This thing right here is going to become DW. So we have 1 over W DW. Now we can integrate both sides of this. This is just negative e to the u. And this is ln the absolute w plus c. Feeling good? We're going to plug back in. So all we're going to do is sub back in our variables, and we have to solve for y. So this is really negative e to the negative y. That's what u was. E equals ln. Of 1 plus e to the x plus c, absolute value 1 plus e to the x. Now, this is all algebra stuff here. Okay, I know you love logs and exponential things. We need to get the y out of that exponent. The way you get a y or a variable out of an exponent is you're going to log it. But you can only do it if it's just something raised to a power. You can't have anything out front. So the very first thing I got to get rid of is this negative here. We're going to divide everything by a negative 1. Okay, that's going to give me this. Negative ln. 1 plus c. There. Something weird happens with this c. Technically, if I divide that by negative 1, it becomes minus c. And that's totally fine. They're right. But if you open up a calc book and you're watching this, sometimes they're like, well, we don't know what c is anyway. So just leave it as a plus c. It's just some stupid number at the end. Okay. Um, for our purposes, I'll leave a minus c there. Now I'm going to natural log both sides. Which seems weird to do because we're going to have a natural log inside of a natural log. But that's okay. But it's natural law of that whole thing. Ln e to negative y is negative y is equal to the ne ln of the negative ln of 1 plus e to the x minus c. Feeling good? And then we're going to divide by negative 1. So this is one big thing. This is ln of this whole ridiculous monster looking thing here. If we divide that by negative 1, we're just going to get y equals negative ln of that thing. Pretty cool? All right. Here's what I've done for you. Super nice. I made an announcement, and I put this little PDF online. It has six questions. Cool? Your job is to solve all of them. Okay? Yeah, when it says the general solution... That means you're going to have a plus C or an A. You're going to have an extra variable in your answer because you don't know what plus C is. If it says the particular solution, that means you're going to find out what C is and they're going to give you a point. Okay? What's up?